seen me the night before in Shoehorn Alley and wondered if I was interested in being in his show. I went, what? I'm interested? You gotta be kidding. Jerome Robbins, of course. So she said, well, would you like to come and audition? I said, absolutely. So I did that. At the time, by the way, in Shimon Alley, Eartha Kitt, my, my I called the Cheetah Vita, uh, but Cheetah was the understudy to, or, to Eartha Kitt. Cheetah Vita, indeed. Yeah, she was the understudy. And uh, uh, that, that show had been written by one of the parties was Mel Brooks. Yeah, so did you say to yourself, wow, this Mel Brooks side, that he's going to have a big career? <laughs> uh, well, I did because I saw him in the basement. I was making a crossover one day and I had to change costumes, and the only way to do it at the Broadway theater was to go underneath the stage. You can't cross on top. So I did it, there was Mel sitting, everybody else was out front, getting congratulated for opening night, and there was Mel with his jacket off, you know, working away, rewriting the show on opening night. I said, oh my God, mm -hmm. that man really, really cares about his work. Sure. Sure. But I, I had met him on the show of shows, ah. shows that I did, you know, one of the TV shows I did, uh, Sid Caesar, and, uh, and there were some pretty good writers on that show. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, well, uh, uh, Neil Simon, uh, 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 what's his else? Uh, Woody yeah. Allen, Woody yeah. Allen, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah, it was incredible staff. And that. All right, so you auditioned for West Side Story, um, do you get called back? Two or three times? Oh, two or three hundred times. Yeah. I see. <laughs> yeah, Jerry was, yeah, he was a perfectionist. So finally, you do get cast and you're in the role of? Baby John. Now, you know, Baby John, this has always confused me a bit. You know, the fact is, these guys are so tough on the character of anybody's, yeah, because uh, she's a girl. But Baby John, I, mean, I would think that they would think he's a wuss and they wouldn't have, want to have anything to do with him. Why do you think that Baby John was allowed to be a member of the Jets? Um, I don't know, but I think that there was a, they kind of protected me. Uh -huh. you know, I was kind of like the little baby, uh -huh. and they took care of me. Uh, and I guess part of the structure of the gang uh -huh. is uh, you, know, you take care of your own. Now, you mentioned Cheetah Rivera, and it's interesting because when you got the part of Baby John, you also overheard that she got the part of Anita. Yes, I was, in, I was actually waiting for Lenny and Leonard Bernstein and for Stephen, and I overheard Jerry talking to them about this girl who I knew had auditioned because she told me she was going to audition for it, Sheeta. And uh, so I went back to the theater where we were doing Shingon Alley, and I told her, and she went, Oh my God, we, the two of us hugged each other and danced around. And we thought it was going to change our lives, which of course it did. Look at Cheetah where she is today. And sure. And go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is um, the famous thing we always hear about Jerome Robbins is that he split the Jets into one section and the Sharks in the other. They couldn't have lunch together. And in fact, anybody's, the girl, had to eat alone because she wasn't part of either group. But my point is that Cheetah Rivera, the Shark Girl, and Tony Mordente the Jet Boy eventually got married. So, did you see that happening? Did you see them have a relationship? No way. Uh huh. No way. So they were pretty surreptitious. Yeah, and I, and I shared the dressing room with uh, Grover Dale, with uh, Tony Mordente, and with Eddie Roll. We all had one dressing room, and right across the hall from us, literally across the hall, was Cheetah's dressing room. So, uh, and we didn't know anything about it. I have no idea. You were very careful. Good. All right, we hear the famous story about Jerome Robbins. I've heard it said about a musical called Billion Dollar Baby. I've heard it attributed to a musical called Look My Arm Dancing. And I've heard it attributed to West Side Story, too. The famous story where Jerome Robbins is giving you notes on the <coughs> stage. You're all on the stage, and he's walking backwards, and backwards, and backwards, and he falls into the orchestra pit. That's the legend. Did this happen on West Side Story? Uh, what happened is the walking backwards and almost falling, when Jerry got to the edge of the stage, uh, for some reason, well, first of all, he had us all lined up in a semicircle, which he did all the time when he was berating us. Berating? <laughs> yeah, he was insulting us. Jerry was, we all had our love hate thing with Jerry, I must say. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he was, you know, insulting us. As he was walking back, he 
got to the edge of the stage, the loop of the stage, and he stopped for a second, and he looked down, realizing that he was going to fall into the orchestra pit. And then he looked up at us, knowing that none, not one of us tried to save him. <laughs> <laughs> we all hated him so much. <laughs> we loved him. <laughs> <laughs>